All right, guys, so the next unit that we're going to be covering is all about gases. So we just did reactions in aqueous solutions where our ions, they were all spread out, but they were contained within a certain volume of the solution. Um, gases, however, can fill whatever container they're in. So we're going to still have spread out particles, but we're also going to have this idea of volume. Okay, so because gases can kind of fill whatever container they're in, in order to describe the state of a gas, we have to describe it in terms of you know several variables. Um, the variables that we're going to use are pressure, temperature, and uh, number of moles and volume. So those four you know, relate to each other, and we're going to use them in order to perform calculations in order to think about problems involving gases. So. There are separate gas laws. You know, there's Boyle's law and Avogadro's law and Charles law and there's all these laws. The thing is, you guys don't have to mem you don't you guys don't have to memorize you know what the names are. In general, though, when you think about um, gases and you think about you know these these variables, you know we have pressure, um, and we can measure pressure. We can measure that in atmospheres. We can measure that in bars. We can measure that in millimeters of mercury. Okay, so. There's different ideas, uh, or sorry, different ways that we can express pressure um, with different units. And in volume, the same way, we can express volume in liters, we can express in cubic meters or cubic centimeters maybe. Um, but the idea, you know, this three-dimensional volume can have different units in it as well. So pressure, volume, temperature, however, we are very limited on, how, on what, what temperatures um, we can use with gases. So temperatures, the units of a temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, we've got to be in Kelvin for that. So remember, um, Kelvin, just take the degree Celsius plus 273. Okay, um, don't worry, there's a 0.15 on the end of that. We don't usually need that, that many sig figs. And then we'll see this variable N, and this is number of moles. Okay, so we don't need a special unit for that. So we have these four variables, and they relate to each other. So we know that. Um, pressure is directly proportional to, that's what this little alpha or fishy thing looks like, it's directly or proportional to um, temperature. So if we were to plot um, pressure versus temperature, we would see that they would, you know, go up together. We also notice that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So the higher our pressure is, the lower our volume is going to be. So if we, you know, plot it pressure, um, versus volume together. At very low pressures, we would have high volumes, and at very high pressures, we'd have low volumes, and then it would um, kind of die off like that, okay? Um, interesting thing, if we were to plot pressure versus one over, over volume, we'd have a linear equation. So, um, you know, at low pressure, we would have high volume, so that would be, you know, one over volume below. And then we just have a nice linear plot like that. Okay, um, and then you know when, when we talk about number of moles, number of moles um, is directly proportional to the pressure. It's also directly proportional to volume. So the more moles we have, the higher the pressure in a container is, or the more volume, you know those those occupy. So with these ideas, you know these different um, relationships. What we can say, we can pull all this together into something called the combined gas law. So the combined gas law pulls together, you know, Boyle's law and Charles' law and Avogadro's law and all, you know all, all those laws. And what it says is that the um, these ratios have to be constant. So in other words, if I have the pressure of a gas and the volume of a gas. Okay, over the number of moles of that gas divided by the temperature of that gas, that has to equal the pressure times the volume. Um, say, say we change the state. Um, say we increase the volume. If we increase the volume to some other volume, then you know pressure um, will change. Maybe we let some. Maybe the volume changed because we let some moles out. Maybe it changed because we changed the temperature. And so what we have here is this combined gas law. Okay. And when we use the combined gas law, we use it when we have a sample of gas and we change one of the properties. So we change the pressure. We change the volume. It's the same gas, and we change something, and we want to know the new 
pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles, what, what have you. A lot of times in these problems, you know, two out of these four will be constant. One's going to change. We want to know how the other reacts. So, yeah, I just want to reiterate. We used, so used when a sample of gas undergoes a change. A change. Okay, so it undergoes a change in pressure, volume, temperature, or number of moles. Okay, and it could be one uh, more than one of these, but the, that in general, this is what the combined gas. These are what the combined gas law problems look like. Now, moving on, you know, we have this combined gas, but what if we? What if the gas isn't undergoing a change? What if it's just kind of there, and we know the number of moles and the temperature and the volume, and we're just wondering, okay, I wonder what pressure you know, something like that would have. If that's the problem, then we have to, you know, um, come up with something called the ideal gas law. And so, in a sense, going back, we can say that PV over NT is equal to a constant. Okay, it's equal to some constant. So if we knew like a pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature for like a certain state, we could find out what this constant is, this constant of, of proportionality is. And what we do is we use this fact. We say at standard temperature and pressure, standard temperature and pressure, and we'll abbreviate this as STP because that's a lot to write out, and it's defined as a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 273 Kelvin or um, zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Um, so as standard temperature and pressure, one mole of gas, of gas, of, I'm gonna call this an ideal gas. So an ideal gas is a gas where the particles aren't sticking together Okay, um, they bounce off, off of each other totally elastically, so they don't stick together at all. They just bounce right off of each other. There's no forces of repulsion or attraction, and the particles themselves don't take up any space. And we'll go over that more when we talk about kinetic molecular theory. But one mole of an ideal gas at the standard temperature and pressure has a volume of 22.4 liters. Now, I want to emphasize this is only at standard temperature and pressure. This does not work at any other <laughs> temperatures and pressures. All the time, I have students almost every year try to say that 22.4 liters per mole of gas, and I'll use that all the time no matter what the pressure and temperature are. You can only use it if you know you're at STP. But we know if we are at STP, we know that one atmosphere of gas has a volume of 22.4 liters, and that's one mole, so it ends one mole, and this is gonna be 273 Kelvin. So we know all those numbers, and so what we get is a number of 0.08206, and expressed in the atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. And this number is called the ideal gas constant R. Okay, now, there's nothing really special, you know, about those units. You know, I could say that one atmosphere is also 760 millimeters of mercury. Um, and I could keep everything else the same. Keep the mole and keep the 273K. So I could do all that and I would get, you know, um, a different value. I would get some value in millimeters of mercury liters per mole kelvin. You could use SI units. You could have your pressure in pascals. Um, you could have your volume in cubic um, meters, and you still have one mole in kelvin, and you would have yeah, different R. So there's nothing special about 0.08206 other than that's the number you get if you use units of atmosphere liters, moles, and kelvin. If you use different units, you're going to get different R. But what this brings us to is we can say that PV over NT is equal to this constant R, this ideal gas constant R. And if we re rearrange that, we have PV is equal to NRT. And this, oops, go back one. This is what we call the ideal gas law. Okay, so this applies to an ideal gas. Okay, so there's our ideal gas law. And this is used for determining um, 
sorry, set. Determining the state of a sample of gas. Okay, so in other words, there's no change that goes on here. Okay, there's nothing that's changing. Oh my goodness, go down. Um, there's no change that I guess here. So say I know what the, I know what the pressure, volume, I know the number of moles of gas I have, and I want to know what the temperature of the sample is at. I can use this. Okay, nothing's changing. Um, in the same way, if I know the number of moles and temperature and the volume, I can figure out pressure. So you can essentially find one variable in terms of the other three variables using the ideal gas law. Um, you, know, you can imagine stoichiometry as well. You can, since we had number of moles, it's like we can tie stoichiometry problems you know, into this. Okay. So those are the two laws that I want you guys to be able to use. Um, PV equals NRT, or I'll probably say pervnert, and then the um, combined gas law. So there you go. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please let me know in class.